One of the great things about guitar as an instrument is all the different ways that you can approach it. Every time you experiment, you change up your style or your approach, it leads to different results. I've talked about it before, but changing up the tuning on your guitar is a really great way to break out of ruts or to get new ideas. And we've been talking about some different tunings on this channel recently, and we're gonna continue to do that with today's video focusing on Nashville tuning. Now you've probably heard of Nashville tuning, but it's a little bit more of an esoteric thing. It's not as synonymous as dadgad or drop D or open E would be. It's actually a lot more sort of niche. But if you're like me, you've heard Nashville tuning a lot growing up. If you've heard Hey You by Pink Floyd or Jumpin' Jack Flash from the Stones, there's countless examples of how to use this tuning and that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. I'm gonna show you how to put your guitar into Nashville tuning and some different ways to use it and show you why you probably wanna take an extra guitar you have laying around and put it in Nashville tuning. Before we jump into the video though, my new video course, Fretboard Fundamentals, is now officially live. If you wanna learn more about the video course, it is linked in the description box down below. It is a comprehensive guitar theory course to help you unlock and completely understand the fretboard. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player with a few holes in your knowledge, this video course is designed to get you up to speed on understanding the fretboard. So check it out, as well as my other courses in the link in the description box down below. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at Nashville tuning and how it works. So what is Nashville tuning? Well, as the name suggests, it's a tuning that came from Nashville. The story goes that around the early to mid 1950s, session musicians and producers in Nashville who were cutting the now legendary country records of the time were looking for a way to get a little bit more jangle, a little bit more top end and sparkle out of the guitar, specifically the acoustic guitar. And this led to some of the players at the time experimenting with switching the string gauges around. What we now know today as Nashville tuning is just standard tuning, but the low strings, the bass strings that are typically wound are replaced with a set of higher strings from a 12 string pack. Now, if you know anything about how 12 strings work, you know that on the low strings, we have two strings, one being the standard string and the one next to it being an octave up, and that is a thinner gauge string. Now, what this is gonna do is essentially give us a much brighter, jangly, higher strung kind of sound. Now, sometimes people will refer to Nashville tuning as high strung tuning or high string tuning, and that's not exactly true. For a high string tuning, like they use in some African style music, uh, the G string stays the same. But in Nashville tuning, we're gonna replace the low E, A, D, and G with the higher strung counterparts from the 12 string pack. The uh, B and E, the high B and E are gonna stay the same. And because this is not an alternate tuning, because we're still playing in standard, all of your typical chord shapes and scale shapes that you already know will work here. And the other cool thing about Nashville tuning is it's a great option for electrics and acoustics. I'm gonna show you both examples in this video, but first let's start by getting this guitar strung up with a Nashville set. All right, so what I've got here is a typical 12 string electric pack. Uh, these are D'Addario XLs. Now you don't have to use a 12 string pack. Nowadays, companies like Stringjoy and D'Addario will actually sell you a pack with string gauges designed for Nashville tuning, but this is the old school way of doing it. Okay, so in a typical 12 string pack, you're gonna have your two strings. These are both uh, E strings. This is your low E right here, and as you can see, I have my typical low string right here, my standard guitar string, and then with it I have the other E, which is a whole octave up. 
So for Nashville tuning, I'm gonna get rid of the standard string. You can just throw that on another guitar and I'm only gonna use the thinner version. This is actually kind of an efficient way to buy strings because then you get two guitars worth of strings out of one pack. What guitar stores won't tell you. Yeah. What they don't, what they don't want you to know. All right, so I've got this guitar strung up and stretched out and this is what it sounds like. tell it's pretty jangly it's really bright and airy and you know by itself it might not sound all that appealing it can sound kind of thin it's lacking in the low end but the point of the Nashville tuning is not to sound good on its own necessarily the real magic and, and purpose behind this tuning is to work well in the context of a full mix a full production and I'm going to show you what I mean so one common thing that we do a lot in the studio or when you're producing music is to double guitar parts. And there's a lot of reasons to do this. I actually made a video about this years ago on my channel, but one of the main reasons behind doubling guitar parts is it adds weight and it adds width to a guitar sound, partially because you can't play the part exactly right more than once. It, we're human beings, it's impossible to play something perfectly. And those little discrepancies, those little minor imperfections between the two parts, when they're stacked on top of each other, add this beautiful width. It's the same reason you would double a vocal, uh, double a rhythm guitar part, double anything. The cool thing about Nashville tuning is you can essentially fake a 12 string sound, but you can do things that a normal 12 string cannot do. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna track a quick little part here on the Nashville tuned guitar, and then I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna play the exact same thing, exact same picking pattern, same chord and everything, and then I'm gonna pan the guitars hard left and right, and you should be able to hear what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna turn on my click. happening there is the two guitars are sort of acting as a 12 string in that you have the primary note, the fundamental, and then you have the octave up note happening. But what's interesting about this is A, you can hard pan the guitars left and right, which you can't do with a 12 string. Also, you can use two different guitars with different pickups. You can use a completely different signal chain if you want, which you can't do with a normal 12 string. You can also do interesting panning and phasing effects between the left and right channel, which you can't do with the normal 12 string. So this is a really great way to sort of fake the 12 string sound if you don't already have one. Plus it opens up a whole world of other possibilities that a normal 12 string can't really pull off. But there's way more to Nashville tuning than just faking a 12 string sound. Uh, it's great on acoustic parts. Check this out. So you should have noticed that the acoustic sounded way bigger. Part of that's because there's two guitars, but it's a different type of sound than if I just had two of the same standard tuning guitars playing at the same time. That's also great, and it's also great for doubling and widening the sound. But when you're using a Nashville tuned guitar like this one, it's not just doubling the part, but it's also adding some different interval relationships in the way the chords are voiced, and it's really opening up the sound of the guitar as a whole. So for example, let's take a look at our typical G major voicing down here on the third fret. Now, if you actually take a look at what's happening here, it's kind of interesting. We've got some double notes here that aren't typically in the same register in a standard tuned guitar, specifically this D here. Right there, we've got a unison D, the same note on two different strings. And like a 12 string, when you have the two strings ringing in the same note, they're slightly out of pitch with one another and you get a nice sort of natural chorusing effect. 
sort of moves back and forth. Same thing happens with our G. Instead of being two octaves apart, they're only one octave apart. And there's a difference in the tone and the response when the two notes are a whole octave apart versus two whole octaves. So let's take a look at a fifth string root triad like C major here, and you'll hear the difference. Usually this major third on top is an octave or two octaves higher than the root, but here it's almost like a closed voicing. But I'm spread out here, and that has some interesting implications for other chord voicings. If we make it a minor chord, that minor third being lower in pitch in the same register as the root here on the fifth string adds a really interesting characteristic. So now let's take a look at some slightly more complex chords. Let's play an E minor 11 add 9. Now that's a pretty interesting chord to begin with, but in this Nashville tuning, it's even more interesting. It's almost more of a piano voicing. It's like this interesting cluster of intervals. And it also sounds like I'm changing the picking pattern. Typically all the notes ascend in pitch if I'm picking from my fifth string up to my first string, but here it's changing. And that has some interesting implications for your picking patterns. It can change up your typical picking patterns and make them sound more interesting. This is what I mean when I talk about changing your tuning can instantly open you up and break you out of ruts. The voicings that you typically play don't sound the same in Nashville tuning. And the picking patterns in the right hand don't sound like they typically do. And this is extra apparent when you start to add some effects and make things a little bit more ambient. One of my favorite things to do with this tuning is to put together a really interesting ambient tone and just have some fun. Nashville tuning. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below. Are you going to throw one of your guitars into a Nashville tuning and experiment with it? I'd highly recommend it. I think it's a ton of fun, but I want to know your thoughts on it. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe here to my YouTube channel. You can check out the affiliate links to the gear that we used in today's video. If you buy through one of those links, I earn a small commission, which helps me out running the channel. Don't forget to check out my video courses, including the brand new fretboard fundamentals link down below as well. And uh, follow me on TikTok. We're making some TikToks over there now. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and remember, there is no plan B.